Many homes today don't have their performance insured or tested, but it's never too late. When you guys did your gut renovation on this home, did you already have performance in mind or was that something that was brought to you as a concept? We didn't really talk about it. Um, we were using a, a very good builder and we just kind of trusted the subcontractors to do what they needed to do mm -hmm. to make the house work. So how has the performance of this home been? We started having issues, major issues, a couple years after it was finished. Uh, they did, we did spray foam insulation and we saw that we were getting a lot of condensation on the windows and couldn't really explain why that was happening, we thought it was a window problem. So we ended up calling a HVAC company to come out and figure out what was happening. And they tested the house and the house couldn't breathe. And so we were having condensation issues. They brought in outside air and encapsulated our crawl space. We stopped seeing condensation in the main living space, but we still had issues in an attic space. Sweating on the door from the attic into the house, and that room was just really very humid and hot, so it half fixed the issues. All right, Corbett, you ready? Ready. All right, we're gonna run some tests and figure out what's happening. Awesome. Ah, so, the crawl space. Now, looking around here, having heard that it's been encapsulated, the story is a little bit more complicated than a typical encapsulation would be. And part of it is to do with this insulation in the ceiling, which is spray foam. So the first thing to do is to cover up the dirt floor in here with a thick plastic vapor barrier, basically to stop the evaporation of the wet soil up into the house. That's a good thing. But they used spray, more spray foam to glue this plastic to the columns and to the walls and things like that. It's not great at doing all things. And some of the marketing says it's a silver bullet that'll solve all your problems. And that just can't be true. There are no silver bullets in home performance. Now, all of this spray foam has flame retardants that come out of it. All of this stuff is very uh, useful for in certain situations. But it also is kind of a science experiment every single time you put it in. So the installer of this is the most singularly important person in the entire chain. Based on what I'm seeing here, this installer was in kind of a hurry, maybe not trained, maybe not paid as much as they should have been. But the fact that this is insulated up here and then also at the walls means that the crawl space is not part of the house and it's not part of outside. So what is it? It's possible that it's like our studio space is gonna be and it's just its own separate little house. In which case, we don't know what is gonna happen in here, temperature-wise and humidity-wise. The company that did the encapsulation knew that, which is really good. We have a monitor system, and we also have a dehumidifier that you can see ducted right here into this space. Let's go upstairs and take a look at that side attic and what's going on up there. All right, so good news is that the insulation does not appear to be very confused. We have continuously insulated roof not insulated at all on the floor, which is the right way to do it. You want either or, you don't want both and you don't want neither. Now you can see the recessed cam lighting behind me. That's good that that's exposed. That's what it would look like in your attic if you had all the insulation out. So you can see what a huge bunch of air leakage that could be. Now the solution for this water issue on the back of the drywall has been to put in a dehumidifier in this side attic. It seems like there is hot, moist air coming in here in the summertime and then meeting up with a cold back of an air-conditioned space, uh, which is the living space right next to it. So what we're going to do is, of course, run a blow order and we're going to run a zonal pressure test on this space, see if it's connected to outside. Then we'll come in and we'll try and pinpoint exactly where this leak is so that we can solve it once and for all. And this house is 4,300 square feet. The rule of thumb if there is such a thing. For people who run blow order tests is you expect about one CFM per square foot. So 4,300 square foot house, about 4,300 CFM. And look at that, we're coming right in at about 4,300 CFM, which is a little concerning because this house is supposedly completely spray foamed. This is not the performance that the spray foam companies are trying to sell. Uh, and that's the thing is that if you're gonna have your house spray foamed and part of the reason that you're paying twice, three times, four times as much than for conventional insulation is because it's supposed to air seal as well. You always wanna prove it. 
Just because somebody says that it's gonna do something doesn't mean that that's the case. Now, this door has been open while we do the test because of course it's supposed to be part of the house. But when we close it, you can see that number one, I can feel a huge breeze here. We can pick that up with smoke. And I can see that it's blasting right into the room. Next big thing is zonal pressure test. Since this is an inside room, we want this top number to be zero. It is not zero, it's nine, which means that there's an 18% connection to outside in that room, even though it's supposedly all air sealed and it's inside the house. That's a big number. Now I have proven that there is air leakage inside that room. All I have to do is go inside and find it with an infrared camera and with my smoke. We can see that there's definitely 50 degree air coming in around this chimney. I'm just gonna check that with smoke. And yes, you can see pretty clearly, I hope, that this is a huge leak. I can feel it. You can see cobwebs shaking in the wind. And that's another indicator. Spiders always spin their webs in places where air is moving through. And so if you see a cobweb, that generally is an indication that there is an air leak there. So this, is actually a very fixable problem. They've completely left this unsealed, but this is not a fireplace flue. This is not a furnace flue. This is the vent for the kitchen. So it's not gonna be super hot. In fact, by the time it gets up here, it's probably cooled down from whatever it was, even if they were firing all six burners down there. So this could be easily sealed with, if you wanted to be really safe, a fire safe foam, if you wanted to match all the rest of the foam, but this can be sealed with simple fire caulk and it would take care of this problem. This is definitely the most major leak that we found in this attic. Um, but of course we would scan the whole thing just to find all of them since we've got the blower door, since we've got this equipment, we just go ahead and identify everything so that we can come back and fix it later. And this fix is literally gonna be half a day for one person.